This is just a day after Patrick McHenry announced his plans not to run for re-election. What used to be the Republican establishment, realizing he was a young gun that came in with the Tea Party, but became the establishment of this Republican conference. They're heading for the hills. What's going on? Yeah, it's a, ch it's a change that we've seen happen in the Republican conference over the past decade, and particularly in the past four to five years since the Trump presidency. You know, another young gun was Paul Ryan. That's he right. was the speaker. He left. He could not get on board with the Trump-style version of the Republican Party. McCarthy channeled it for a little bit, but it was always this uneasy alliance. You kind of knew it was a matter of time before they came from him, mm -hmm. for him, ousted him. And he's been replaced by somebody who's a creature much more of the right wing, a much more ideological figure in a speaker, Mike Johnson. People like Kevin McCarthy, he tried very hard to change his stripes and fit in, but he doesn't fit with the current Republican Party anymore. No, nope, I'm looking at that cover now. Paul Ryan, Eric yep. Cantor, Kevin McCarthy, Free Young up, Guns, yep, a new generation of conservative leaders. How difficult does this make Speaker Johnson's job, given the fact that the majority is getting slimmer by the day. Yeah, I mean, it could be a case if Democrats win the special election to replace George Santos, and that's a very competitive seat. It's D plus two. Yeah, you know, um, Republicans could be in a position where they can only lose two votes to pass anything. And they've already struggled to pass things with the majority as it is. So they're going to be very constrained next year. It's going to be hard for people, for moderates to kind of break with the party because they could really sink bills if they do that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard for Johnson to keep that group all together. The one kind of silver lining someone has said is that, look, it's already not really been a functional majority to begin with, so what's one or two different votes going to be? But it takes a hard task and makes it even harder. Well, we know he's got a big war chest, yeah. and apparently he's got a lot of scores to settle, and Maria, he could be using that money to work against people like Matt Gates and have a lot of fun in this campaign cycle. But to your point, we have work to do in Washington. And I wonder, Julie, find your thoughts on a potential border deal, because we know that that's what will bring about funding for Ukraine and for Israel. And this job just got more difficult, potentially, if it bleeds into next year, uh, for Mike Johnson. He's going to need Democrats to make that happen. So what would it look like? Well, I mean, I think they have an issue when it's now going to be coming to down to changes in asylum. I mean, that is going to be difficult to get enough Democrats on board with. Now, the president is signaling he is willing to have a discussion regarding immigration, but you have a lot of sides to get together, some pushing to make sure Ukraine is attached, others saying we don't want to necessarily have that attached unless you get the border done. And now, as you just talked about Kevin McCarthy, so an even slimmer majority. I would say that Mike Johnson had his work cut out for him. Well, we heard from Senator Debbie Stabenow of Michigan calling out Republicans for their negotiating tactics when it comes to the border. Take a listen to what she said earlier today. There were um, a number of things that certainly were put on the table that would garner 10 Democrats, for sure. And so, but unfortunately, it feels like every time something was put on the table, then the goalposts were moved. And the one thing that we will not do is support H.R. 2, which basically would close the border of the United States. Julie, where can we see middle ground? She's saying Democrats will not support H.R. 2. And it seems that some of these proposals look very much like H.R. 2 that the Republicans want to see path in order to get their blessing for more aid to Ukraine. Well, I think there could be some type of an agreement when it comes to asylum, some very, very small changes. There could be some possibilities there. There could be some changes when it comes to funding on the borders. I think a lot of the states are learning now migrant costs, so there could be a little bit on that. But again, it's going to have to be coupled with things that are going to be difficult for some Republicans to stomach. So they have a long way to go. It's not just, of course, a border deal uh, that would unlock funding for Ukraine. A lot of Republicans want some questions answered and accountability for the money. We spoke today with Ohio Senator J.D. Vance about that. Listen. My advice to the president and anybody else who wants more Ukraine funding is you have to justify it and you have to tell the American people, when does this end and what is our ultimate objective here? The president has got to articulate what is another $61 billion accomplished that $150 billion hasn't. 
Jonathan, these members want to see an end game drawn out. It's pretty tough to do that when you're talking about the war in Ukraine. What could be the answer from the administration? It's really tough right now. They're at a really um, they're in a really uh, divisive moment, and there's not a lot of common ground uh, when it comes to Ukraine. I think some transparency measures are something that Democrats could get on board with. Accountability. Accountability measures. I think the bigger issue is that they're disagreeing about what the negotiation even is. Democrats say, listen, if you want tougher border policies, well, then we want some immigration policies like, you know, protecting dreamers or path to citizenship. And Republicans say, no, 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 it's Ukraine for border policy. And so they're not even talking about the same universe of issues at the moment. Um, and they're voting right now uh, that it looks like it's going to fail this initial step. Both sides think they might get some leverage out of it. But this could be something that goes into the new year because there's not a hard deadline on this that could force a compromise in the way that you see when there's a government funding deadline or a debt ceiling deadline. Well, this just in, they lack the votes in the Senate okay. to advance that Ukraine funding. So what kind of timeline does this set us up with? Because the individuals I have spoken to in the last few weeks are actually saying that they don't think they could see any sort of supplemental until February. It's possible because Congress is only scheduled to work for one more week this this winter. They finally have a year where they don't have a funding deadline over the holidays. And I think lawmakers are very eager to get out of town and not spend their, their December in Washington. And so it could push into the next year in January and in February. There are new funding deadlines. That could be a moment where there, you know, there has to be something that moves. And so possibly they attach this supplemental mm -hmm. to whatever funding happens then. Um, but that raises the question of how long Ukraine can go without American aid and how much American aid is available between now and then. Well, you better believe we'll hear about the border in the debate tonight. Oh, yeah. Uh, Julie, how big of a role will this issue play? We're down to four here. They're trying to make a mark. And I suspect we'll hear more severe versions of border reform than H.R. 2, as Ron DeSantis, for instance, proposes shooting people as they cross the border. I think we're going to hear a lot about border tonight. And Joe, like you said, I think everybody's going to have more extreme positions than HR2. And I think the question is, will everyone try to out border each other on how far that they should go? I mean, you've got four people tonight that are really trying to make something stick. They want some comment to be repeated over and over and over again. So I wouldn't be surprised if you heard something on the border that likely there's no way that it could happen. But it's definitely right. something I think you have to to watch for tonight and I think you also have to watch for especially the fireworks that could happen between Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis as they both vie to become I guess the front runner for second place at this point.